Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Zora of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video, as the title says above, is going to be my November wrap up and my December reads. This is insane. Like, I know I just said this in my November book haul, but like, December is here. 2019 is over we're going into the roaring 20s again like i'm here for it i'm excited but i'm just like because uh, i'm almost pushing 30 but it don't look like it which is awesome but um yes we're gonna dive in um i didn't do as much reading as i planned to do just because it was such a hectic um month and you guys know if you saw my sermon writing blog or if you got a chance to watch my um first out out of ministry speaking engagement just click the eye on the screen to go watch both of those videos but um yeah i was preparing for my first sermon and i gave my first out of ministry um sermon at a different ministry and it was pretty cool pretty awesome and i enjoyed it so i didn't get to do as much reading as i wanted to but i did get enough done if that makes sense so diving in to november so wrapping up my bible studies i ain't doing none of them I know I said I was going to study John and Psalms. I, 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 I ain't do not one. Um, I think I did John and that was it. I did chapter one in John and then I never went back. So, bad me. Um, yeah, Psalms. I'm just going to pause on Psalms until January. I just mentally, I don't think I'm ever going to get to Psalms for the rest of this year. So, we're going to push that back. But I didn't do any of those. So, that's bad. Um, going on to nonfiction. So for nonfiction, I had three books. I ain't read none of them. Um, I started <laughs> two of them, but I didn't. So the first one was 31 Verses to Write on Your Heart by Liz Curtis Higgs. I think I completed only day one on this. Yeah, I read the introduction, which you guys can see my notes here. I'm trying to see if I can show you guys it. I read the introduction and day one up until day one but i i just never went back to finish because i got super busy so that was a flop but this was actually a really interesting book i'm gonna go back to this it goes through different verses and how to memorize certain verses so i did enjoy this i'm gonna go back to this the next one i say i was gonna read but i ain't really get a chance to read <laughs> terrible terrible i still got my bookmark in here and i don't even know why i only made it to day one and i didn't even honestly complete day one fully um and that's she prays by debbie lindell it's a 31 day journey to confident conversations with god i'm gonna go back to this in december because i really want to read this it really is good um but it's pretty much a 31 day prayer challenge um i did start reading like i said if i can just show you guys so i did start reading and marking up hopefully you guys are seeing this but I never got a chance to finish. I made it up to the end of day one. Um, and I didn't even really get a chance to complete the actual like prompt in the back. So we have this. Didn't complete it. Moving on to the next book. We have my Evangelist and Minister's Handbook by Deborah C. Hooper. Didn't, I, I didn't pick this book at all. Pick this book up at all. Like not at all um i'm literally like halfway didn't finish it um and it's not that it's a hard read it's really not it's like the most simplest read ever but i'm taking my time i'm marking it up and really getting a lot of information especially after my first speaking engagement i definitely need to go back to this because this um will definitely help me with my next one so we have this which i'll be throwing into the, into my december read so okay so then moving on to the fictional novels that I said I wanted to read. Um, of the few I said I wanted to read, I only got to four. Um, the other four I didn't get a chance to read. So, yeah. Um, the first one is A Royal Father by Linda Ferguson. This is the third and final book in the Lion and the Butterfly trilogy. Oh my god, it is so just me now i have my reading vlog up for this if you want to see it i did a reading vlog for all the books books one two and three and um five stars all the way this is probably my second favorite because the first book will be my favorite but this is my second favorite in the series um this book just makes it so worth reading the entire trilogy it is so good and it's more so about letting go and trusting god and letting god do what he needs to do in your life and understanding that you cannot take control of everything um it's all god so i Jerusha and Antonius were so amazing. I actually ended up liking Effa 
in this book. And if you guys know who Effa is, if y'all saw my first two reading vlogs on this, then yeah. I ended up liking him in this book. Still hated Caiaphas. Like, can we still put him in a volcano inside of a, uh, a tin garbage can with the lid on top and drop him into an erupting, like, volcano? I'm so serious. That might sound, like, crazy to y'all, but Caiaphas pisses me off. But um, I enjoyed this. Loved it. Read it with my sis, of course, Stephanie, over at Colton Beauty and Books. And we loved this so much. So we definitely will we definitely will be doing another buddy read for December, which I will share with you guys. But gave this five stars. Totally recommend this in the entire trilogy. Such a great read. The next book I read is The End of the Magi by Patrick W. Carr. I gave this a four star rating. I thoroughly enjoyed this, but... I felt like the last portion was rushed. And I do have my reading vlog coming this Saturday for you guys on this book. So you'll understand what I mean um, in my reading vlog. But I felt like the last the last third of this book was really rushed. And I felt like it was a cop-out with how much scripture was thrown in. Um, and I'm not saying that the scripture itself was a cop-out. What I'm saying is the way it was written. It was like, okay, Jesus is born. Jesus is out here getting baptized. Jesus is dying. He did. He's resurrected. It's just like, it, it happened like in the turn of a page. And I was just like, what's going on? Like, why is it happening this quickly? Um, so I just, I felt like, if, if you guys know, need to know what I mean, like, the last few chapters are all purple tabs, you can see. But you don't see purple throughout any of the other chapters, which is why I kind of gave it a four-star rating, because I felt like it was a cop-out. Um, I don't, I don't know. Just, you'll see my reading blog to understand. But, um, I did enjoy the journey. I love my red as a character. Wallagash is amazing. Um, Roshan. Uh, Roshan. I think that's how you say it. Roshan. I love Roshan. Oh my god. Roshan. Roshan is a very interesting character for many reasons. And for the different twists that Patrick W. Carr threw in there. It, <laughs> if it wasn't for the last third of the book, it definitely would have been a five stars. But I gave it four stars. And I felt like... The last half of the journey was just boring to me. Like, it's definitely a journey kind of book, so you are going on a traveling journey with my red. But that last half was, like, dying down, and then that last third was, like, straight scripture, and it was written too quickly. So I gave it a four-star rating, but I enjoyed it. And this is actually going to be the book club pick for the Biblical Fiction Buffs book club that is on Goodreads. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, click the eye on the screen to go to my announcement video on that book club. But it's a book club hosted by Jenna Van Maurick here on YouTube. If you guys are interested in more information, I'll leave the Goodreads link down below. It's a Biblical Fiction book club where we read Biblical Fiction. Um, the first book that we read for the fall was A Light on the Hill. And then for the winter, we're going to be reading this book. So I'm super excited to dive back into this with the ladies and discuss it because ugh, I have feelings on this book. So much feelings but yeah we had that the next book i read was the piper's pursuit by melanie dickerson i gave this four stars this is a ya historical retelling of the pied piper or the reimagining rather and i gave this four stars i really really enjoyed this this is the 10th book in the hagenheim series i've only read book nine which is called the warrior maiden which was about mulan which i love that one so i read this one next and it follows stefan and katrina and what is hamlin yeah, Hamlin in 1424, and um, I love Katrina as a character. She's very sassy. She's very bold. Um, she doesn't, like, hold back. And Stefan, Stefan, excuse me, I hated Stefan in um, the ninth book, which was a warrior maiden. I could not stand him, but this is his redemption story, so I kind of fell in love with him in this book. It was so comical, so cute, and yeah, those are my thoughts. If you guys want full, like, thoughts on these books, I'll leave all the links I have to reviews down below. Or actually just click the link in the description box to go to my blog, which will go into more depth about each of these books if you're interested. But we have this. The next book and final book that I read um, was The Deadly Deceit by Natalie Walters. This is Romantic Suspense. And you guys, I gave this four stars. This blew my mind. I read this in one day. Literally read this in one day. Um, I was shocked by how much I love this. I don't do thrillers. I don't do suspense, horror, mysteries. I don't. They don't intrigue me. But this... Vivian and um, Deputy Ryan, right? Yeah, Deputy Ryan, Bo Bro Diane Deputy Ryan Frost are the cutest couple ever. They're funny. Um, this is a sequel. This first book is called Living Lies, which I did not read, but I did get a chance to read this one, and um, I didn't feel confused. They did make some kind of references to the first book, but. 
but it wasn't extremely detrimental to understanding this book. They um, coincide, but they're not like straight sequels, like how it goes from like one story and follows. It doesn't do that. It's kind of like a companion series, so it was really easy to follow along, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I definitely want to get my hands on the first book. But um, it follows Vivian. She's back home in Georgia. Is she in Georgia? Yeah, she's in Walton, Georgia, and um, she's working a job she doesn't like. And right before she gets ready to leave, her boss gets killed, and she has to figure out what happened. Her boss was a journalist. She's a journalist, and um, it's just her investigating and finding out the truth. And it's it's some crazy stuff that go down, crazy stuff that go down. But it was so good because there was no foul language, um, and then there was no over the top romance scenes, um. As a romance lover and as a fantasy reader, I'm used to the foul language in novels or over-the-top romance scenes, um, books that include like crazy sex and all that. So this was such a clean read and I enjoyed it. A lot of the times when I read books that don't include that, and it, it might sound crazy, sound crazy what I'm about to say, but a lot of the times when I read books that don't include that, I get bored. Um, like literally, I, I fall asleep because I need something to keep me awake and it's kind of like watching a movie. Books to me are like movies. I get to imagine the characters in my head. So this one was so good. Like, I know what I just said probably confused a lot of people. Um, and if you're confused, yes, I'm an evangelist. Yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I read romance novels. Yes, I read books that have foul language. Yes, I'm going to get into a whole video because I've been asked before. I'm going to put this book down, but I love this book. But... Um, I've been asked before about my taste in reading and my taste in um, books. And I feel like if you're not convicted to stop, then you're fine. And what I mean by that is that the Lord will convict you, excuse me, the Holy Spirit will convict you in your time. I used to be able to listen to rap music nonstop. It didn't bother me. Now, I can't listen to hip-hop and rap too long because my ears start to tingle. And I think I mentioned this in another video. Um... I can watch certain TV shows and certain movies, but then again, some shows I can't watch. I used to watch Lucifer um, that was on Netflix. I don't know which channel it came on, but it was on Netflix, and I enjoyed it. I watched the whole first season. I was like, yeah, this is good. I was enjoying the character of Lucifer, but the Holy Spirit had to remind me that that's not right. So I feel like if you're convicted about certain things, then do it. But if you're not convicted, then that's perfectly fine. So if you are a, a, a reader that does not feel convicted reading books that have foul language or vulgar scenes then you don't feel convicted you can't force your convictions on someone else um i don't get convicted but my taste in reading them as often as i used to plummeted um i literally could read erotic romances back to back like back to back non-stop but i've come to a point where i have to space out my reading um books that include crazy amount of like sex scenes i can't read as often as i used to i'm reading a lot more christian fiction than ever so um it's not that i don't still read my non-secular books because um, my non-secular books my secular books excuse me <laughs> it's not that i don't read my secular books i love them i'm a reader at heart reading is fun for me fantasy paranormal i love them all but um i haven't been convicted to stop you know, God is not saying, let me snatch your taste away. No, but I do now have to limit how I do my reading. So I'm literally reading maybe one or two romances a month that are like secular. And then um, I'm reading Christian romances through biblical fiction, if that makes sense. I still read my fantasy because we love fantasy. Just fantasy is life. Okay, fantasy is life for me. I love fantasy. Um, but I'm, because I love fantasy so much, I'm getting introduced to so many different Christian fantasies that I'm truly enjoying. So that was a whole spiel on the side. So I hope that made sense, okay? So now moving on to the other books that I said I wanted to read, but I didn't get a chance to read because we all know November was a crazy month for me. Um, the first one, which I need to, I need to get to this ASAP, like ASAP. Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Um, I ain't touched this book at all this month, like at all. I'm so far behind, and that's because I've been busy. However, this is not for those of you who are new to my channel. This is not a brand new read for me. This is technically a reread. The first time I read it as an ebook, um, now I'm physically rereading it as well as listening to the audiobook. Um, and this time I'm taking my time and I'm annotating as I read. So I'm a little bit a little behind, but this is the last month. Um, we have about three, four, we actually have four more weeks 
before we're done with this for the Daughter of Increase Facebook group. And I will be having a Facebook Live party to discuss this book in December. But um, I, I didn't get a chance to pick this up, like, at all. So, we have that. The next book I didn't get a chance to read, but will be to priority in December, is The Shaft by Scott B. Delaney. This is Christian Supernatural Thriller. I didn't get a chance to read this. I'm going to be reading this in December. Same thing with this one by Debbie Gilliland. It's To Comfort a King, which is the story of a bee shag and King David. Didn't get a chance to read this. You guys know why. And the last one I didn't get a chance to read is Blood Moon Redemption by Judy Dutron. Um, yeah. I, I ain't even like, y'all yeah, know. Okay? Alright. So, let's move on now to my December TBR. Okay, so for December, I'm gonna put two nonfictions on my list. Um, and those are the two from November, which is She Prays by Debbie Lindo. I want to get into this for the month of December, starting tomorrow. Um, I'm going to restart at day one. It's a 31-day challenge, so I'm going to try to do this every day in the morning when I wake up at 5.15 in the morning. Do this. The next one is going to be The Hooper's Evangelism Ministers Handbook by Deborah C. Hooper. I just need to finish this book like it is what it is. It needs to be done with, and it's a really good book. And because um, the Lord is doing so much ministry-wise with me, I definitely want to read this in its totality before the end of the year because I, I have a feeling 2020 is going to be crazy, like crazy. So um, I'm ready for this. All right, so on to my fiction. So the first two books I'm going to read are E-Arcs. Um, I have physical copies coming of these books, but I don't know when they're coming. Um, but they're both being released in February, and they're from one of my favorite authors and another author that I really, really enjoy. And uh, if you guys don't know who my favorite biblical fiction author is by now, her name is Tessa Abshaw. And I'm a part of her launch team for Daughter of Rome. I will pop the cover here and... You guys do not understand. I have it. Yo, where, where's my my nook? My nook. I'm gonna open it. I have it ready to go. Um, um, is I'm gonna read it on here. I, I I can't wait. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm in the group and people are like talking about the book and it sounds so good. And we know that I love Tessa. Of all seven of her books, I have given six of them a straight five star rating. One book got a four star. But like, come on. So I'm super super stoked. All I know is that this is going to be her biblical fiction story on Priscilla and Aquila. That is all I know. That is all I need to know. And I'm super <laughs> excited to get into this book. So I cannot wait to dive headfirst into this book. The next book is going to be a sequel. It's a sequel, but it's also the third book in a series that I was reading from Miso Andrews. And that's going to be Isaiah's Legacy. This is a sequel to Isaiah's Daughter, but it is the third book in, I think, The Prophets and Kings. The first one was Isaiah's Daughter followed by A Fire and Lions, and now we have Isaiah's Legacy, which is going to be on King Manasseh, and um, obviously the prophet Isaiah, and um, Manasseh is the son of Hezekiah, if I'm not mistaken, so um, the first book, Isaiah's Daughter, was about King Hezekiah, and I, the prophet Isaiah, and um, Hef Hefziva, I can't remember that name, it'll be on the screen, but um, that was such a good romance, so I'm like super, super excited to read this book so bad because I've been waiting for this book. You guys don't understand. I've been waiting for this sequel for so long, and um, it's finally here. I have an arc of it, and I cannot. I've, I've been trying to wait for the physical copy, but I just I can't wait any longer because I obviously have things to do as a um, launch team member. So I just have to suck it up and read it, and then when the physical copy comes, I can always reread it. So we have that. All right, following that, we're going to re re redeem in love. Okay, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to read it. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to be happy with life. That's what's going to happen because I need to finish this book. You guys all know I love this book so much. It's not biblical fiction. It's historical fiction, but it's a historical retelling of the prophet Hosea and Gomer and um, that's all. And a lot of the ladies in the group have already started to finish it and enjoy it. And you guys understand, I love this book so much and... I only made it to chapter, I'm at chapter 12 now, I have to read chapter 12. So I have actually quite a few chapters to read, because like I said, I'm behind. But um, this book is so, so good. So we're going to read this, we're going to finish it. It's really supposed to be done before the end of the year. Um, but the last week of our reading will be for Christmas. I'm going to try to finish this before Christmas so that I can prepare for the um, live party that I want to do based on this book. But we gotta read this because it's so good the next book we have is the shaft by scott v delaney and this is going to be supernatural thriller and it sounds really epic i'm gonna read the back of this as quick as possible because this back synopsis always gets me tongue-tied so it says 
Um, it is December 2017, and a sweeping religious movement is gaining traction in the United States. As spiritual leaders diligently work to spread the word of God to the people, liberal factions in the world of pharmaceutical and scientific development create a secret society with a dark mission to thwart the group's conservative impact on what society considers to be morally acceptable. As a string of church-related murders plague the nation, the FBI and local authorities race to locate the assassin responsible. When the members of the secret society realize that the murderers are not stopping or slowing the threat, they resort to kidnapping. One of their abductees is Andrew Morrison, a key leader of the Call Ministry. After he manages to escape from his captors in Texas, he must identify and locate his family as well as the killer of many of his friends that were fellow leaders in this ministry. But as angelic hosts enter the scene to protect and intervene, now only time will tell who will win this compelling battle of good versus evil. In this riveting supernatural thriller, a chilling murder spree places a church leader in the crosshairs of a killer determined to stop a religious movement. It sounds epic. Like, it sounds like something out of Supernatural. And we love Supernatural. The, the show, Supernatural. I love Supernatural. It's so good. So good. But um, I'm super stoked to dive into this, like, really, really quickly. I'm actually going to read this right after I read the two e-arcs that I have to read from Tessa Asher and Misu Andrews. I'm going to dive that right into this so that I can do my reading vlog. And um, that will be up, hopefully, within two weeks, I can have that vlog up and edited. Because this week coming, I have my vlog for um the end of the magi so hopefully this is the next reading vlog you see so we have that following that we have to comfort a king by debbie gilliland which is a story of a bishag and i'll read the back first kings chapter one verses three through four this is the niv it says they searched throughout israel for a beautiful girl and found a bishag a shunammite and brought her to the king the girl was very beautiful and she took care of the king and waited on him when Abishag leaves her home to fulfill the commission to comfort King David during his final months of life, she leaves behind a deaf sister, a small brother, and a father who is still grieving the death of his wife. Also left behind is Abishag's betrothed Joseph, who has already waited many months to claim his bride. Now he must wait until Israel's king no longer needs her. Torn from the comfort of her small village, Abishag is thrust into a world of unfamiliar customs, royal expectation, and palace intrigue. She is greeted suspiciously by the king's concubines, warmly by Queen Bathsheba, and reluctantly by King David himself. Donajai, I can never pronounce King David's son name, so it'll be on the screen. The king's son is bitter over his father's choice of Solomon as Israel's next king. He determines to ruin Abishag to prevent her from being given as a prize to Solomon at their father's death. Suffering personal losses as well as scorn from much of the royal court, Abishag begins to question God's goodness and placing her in the king's service. Can she find someone there who understands that one who comforts the king is in great need of comfort herself? Will Abishag's time with the king end in despair or joy? So that's going to be interesting. I can't wait to dive into this. Then we have this, which is Blood Moon Redemption by Judy Ducharm. What I remember from when I talked about this is that this is a futuristic kind of sci-fi novel. No, it's a futuristic suspense, excuse me, um, and it's about an ancient relic, a puzzling prophecy, and a young woman tied together through the ages. Um, so it follows different time periods. So you have 1493, 1494, 1949 to 1950, and then 1967 to 1968. And it takes place in various locations such as Israel, Iraq, um, and I think it takes place in the States as well. I'm trying to find the one where it talked about the states she, yeah it takes place in chicago in 1507 so it takes place in like different time areas so it's kind of one of those like futuristic suspense books that follows i guess different characters over a different time period i'm interested to see how this goes i i really don't know we'll see i requested it for review from the company um which is ambassador international so this one and to comfort a king were the last two that i needed to read from them as they sent me for a book so i'm excited to dive into both of these for this month coming up okay so i have two more books for you guys so we have delilah this is really a reread and the reason why i'm rereading this is because this is actually going to be the first book in my book look makeup series and basically what it is is i'm going to take a bunch of these biblical fiction christian fiction novels that i have and do makeup tutorials and while i'm doing my makeup and doing the tutorial i'm also going to discuss the book this might actually end up being my second one because we already know i'm about to read tessa afshaw so 
that might be my first one um and this one might be the second but i do want to read this ahead of time refresh my memory and um also mark it up because i did give this four stars i did enjoy it but i don't like looking in my e-reader to remember where i wrote quotes and things that i liked so i'm going to just reread this and rewrite my thoughts and notes to see if i will end up giving this a five star the second time around or not but it's about samson and delilah pretty much but i'll read the back it says a complex and compelling glimpse at one of the bible's most notorious women life is not easy in philista especially not for a woman and child alone when beautiful wounded delilah finds herself begging for food to survive she resolves that she will find a way to defeat all men who have taken advantage of her she will overcome the roadblocks life has set before her and she will find riches and victory for herself when she meets a legendary man called Samson, she senses that in him lies the means for her victory. By winning, seducing, and betraying the hero of the heroes, she will attain a position of national prominence. After all, she is beautiful, she is charming, and she is smart. No man, not even a supernaturally gifted strong man, can best her in the war of wits. So, um, yes, this cover is gorgeous, though. Oh, my gosh. Uh, my makeup tutorial will include purples and greens and nude lipstick. So, um, yes, I'm so stoked to get into this. And the last book I have for you guys is historical fiction. Historical romance, or is it historical fiction? It says historical fiction, but it's also romance in it. And I'm buddy reading this with my sis, Stephanie, over at Quilts and Beauty in Books, of course. And that's going to be Spice King. This is by Elizabeth Camden. It's book one in Hope and Glory. And honestly, what attracted to me to this book is the cover. Do y'all see? He just looks really, like, proper and good in this suit don't judge me um if y'all don't know by now sometimes i like books because of their covers this is one of them but um it's historical fiction romance so it says gray delacroix has dedicated his life to building an acclaimed global spice empire but it has come at a cost resolved to salvage his family before they spiral out of control he returns to his ancestral home for good after years of traveling the world as a junior botanist for the smithsonian annabelle larkin has been charged with the impossible task of gaining access to the notoriously private delacroix plant collection if she fails she will be out of a job and the family farm in kansas will go under she has no idea that in gaining entrance to the Delacroix world, she will unwittingly step into a web of dangerous political intrigue far beyond her experience. Unable to deny her attraction to the reclusive business tycoon, Annabelle will be forced to choose between her heart and loyalty to her country. Can Gray and Annabelle find a way through the storm of scandal without destroying the family Gray is fighting to save? It sounds like it's about to be a whole lot of drama. I'm not really into historical fiction. I'm just not. Um, but when there is faith aspects to it, I tend to enjoy it. So I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, it sounds like it's going to be epic. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. Oh, I love the way the font is. That is so pretty. The title, I mean, the chapter headers are like really pretty with the font as well. I'm excited to see where this goes. How many chapters? 30, about 40 chapters. I'm going to say, oh, nope. So it's 42 chapters, and then in the back there's actually questions for discussion, which I probably will answer. Um, and there's also going to be a sequel coming out in 2020 about, I guess, Gray's sister. So that is interesting. But um, yeah, historical fiction, romance, can't wait to dive into this book. Okay, so that ends my december reads november wrap-up i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have read any of these let me know links like i said are down below just go to my blog if you want to purchase any of these books um or if you're interested in any of my reviews all the ones that have reviews will be directly linked to my written review if they don't have reviews then just click the basic link down below to take you to the corresponding post that will have all of the links included i decided to do it that way from now on one because there's just not a lot of space in the, the description box for youtube and two i want to utilize my blog more i miss blogging the way i used to so um yeah that is pretty much it for this video so Thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff. If you are not a part of the family, definitely join the sisterhood. I love all of my sisters here on YouTube. If you are a part of the family, click the bell to stay notified. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.